this international city with its thriving business and cultural life is a powerful reminder, I think, of the power of culture and particularly the strength of culture-led regeneration. If we think of the work today of the Welsh National Opera, of Sherman Theatre, of the sports events uh, at the Millennium uh, Stadium, if we think of the new Foster and Partners uh, BBC Stadium, we can see an incredible programme of regeneration and growth focused around culture. Examples of Welsh creativity and culture are similarly bountiful throughout the v as collections of applied and decorative art. The 19th century photographer pioneer, Reverend Calvert Richard Jones, was one of the first to apply a schooled artist's eye to photography uh, and a forerunner of the wide-angle panoramic view, and we have that collection. The Welsh heritage of Mary Quant, one of modern Britain's most iconic creative exports, will be explored in our landmark v &A exhibition on Mary Quant uh, next year. Many more examples grace our collections, from the romantic printed wallpapers of household name Laura Ashley and Julian MacDonald's ingenious and complex knitted fashion garments to the celebrated contemporary ironworks of Julia Griffiths Jones. But Cardiff is also a city rich with historic cultural heritage, a city which, and having studied of the Victorian Edwardian civic past, this is a city which was really connected again with its civic identity and this is something that reverberates with us at the Victoria and Albert Museum. We sit in the centre of what is known as Albertopolis, this great civic complex which flowed south uh, of Kensington Palace inspired by Prince Albert in the mid 19th century to bring together science and art in one great campus uh, of learning uh, and discovery. This civic drive has been the backbone, as I'll say, of the museum since its Victorian foundations. But much like the Cardiff Business Club's own drives to support the flourishing of business, the v has always been a museum intrinsically tied to industry. It was this combined force of education and business that has shaped the v &A. When you go to the Victoria and Albert Museum today, when you go to one of our exhibitions, you walk through our shop. Uh, you cannot avoid going through our <laughs> shop. Uh, and first of all, that's good because you walk through our shop. But secondly, we right from the beginning have supported designers and makers and manufacturers uh, and placed that right at the heart of our organization. So I want to talk to you this evening about what we've learned at the v &A about brand building. And as the v &A came into being some 166 years ago, we have a long history to learn from. As Scott said, in February 2017, I was proud to be appointed director uh, of this remarkable uh, institution. And some asked what, as a former member of parliament, could have possibly have prepared me for working in a vast Victorian edifice surrounded by gnarled historical artifacts. <laughs> but somehow, there were some insights, um, although as, as good a training uh, as being in the Parliamentary Labour Party was for politics, I never really understood politics until I had my first meeting of the curators at the v &A and then uh, and, and then I was uh, schooled. Today the v &A is is a world-class collection of 2.3 million objects. It is a centre of excellence for innovative curatorship, conservation, and research. It is a place for brilliant exhibitions, displays, and events, thought-provoking permanent galleries and displays, and a natural home for art and design education. Perhaps most importantly, the v &A, despite being this repository of the past, despite putting on display 5,000 years of human artistic and design excellence is a consciously future-focused institution. We use the tools of the past for contemporary relevance. And again, this has always been the key to our institution, bridging historicism and modernity, using the most advanced technology and insights to think about uh, the past. Henry Cole, the first director, was the pioneer collector of photography. 
He was the pioneer collector of plaster casts. He was the pioneer collector of electrotypes. He wanted the, the most advanced techniques to make us think about the past. And if I think about one of the differences between my time in Parliament and my time running the VNA, it's that, yes, we're surrounded by history at the VNA, but there's no nostalgia. Whereas in Parliament, there was a deep well of nostalgia about the past. At the VNA, there's a really rigorous and vigorous engagement with the meaning uh, and legacy of the past.